Good afternoon to you. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Wednesday, May the 10th, 2023. I'm over in Colby, Kansas, tracking the storms for today. Had an amazing day yesterday. I'll show you some of those highlights in just a moment. And just go over a little bit about our plan for the day and even into tomorrow. And, um, you know, kind of show you what we're doing out here. Why are we here? I'm known mainly for hurricanes. Well, that's true, but a lot of practice, a lot of getting the equipment ready, getting our back-end team ready with our live broadcasting capabilities. It's more interesting to do all of that in a real-world situation, plus the beauty of it out here, the severe weather. Yes, it can be impactful. It can have consequences to people's lives, but it is an amazing thing to see in person. We saw hundreds of storm chasers out yesterday, some of them tour groups, some of them individuals, some of them with media companies, and maybe a little bit of everything in between. So anyway, that's why we're out here to do some testing of our equipment, which I'm glad we did because we've noticed a few bugs we had to get out of things, but everything worked. I'll show you a highlight reel uh, to wrap things up. As they say, wait for it. Stay till the end. You won't be disappointed. All right, let's see, see what we got. Enhanced risk today. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you can go to the SPC and check it out yourself. But that's the area that we're going to be interested in. I'm sitting right here in northwest Kansas in the Colby area with my colleague from near Denver. His name is Matt, and he and I will be tracking the storms as they fire up later today. The tornado threat, fairly substantial there in that yellow, even in the brown. Um, straight line wind, downburst winds, severe thunderstorm winds, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be problematic over a pretty wide swath. But then the hail... We really have to watch out for that hail. Luckily, in one regard, with these being more supercell-type storms, instead of large clusters, hopefully, we can avoid these hail cores with our vehicles. Did a pretty good job of that yesterday. No major issues, no like, like severe damage to our vehicles, even though we did get some hail. Um, that is a problem. Hail causes a lot of damage, and we don't want to ignore that. So that's today. And by the way, I don't want to ignore... Down here, um, not so much for severe weather, but there's been a lot of rain. Houston's been flooding. I saw a Fox Weather colleague, uh, Robert Ray, reporting from Houston yesterday and today. A lot of heavy rain down there in the Harris County area and some severe weather as an unstable ma air mass lurks across that region. Now, tomorrow, we get an enhanced risk right in the heart of Tornado Alley there. Um, that's going to be interesting. I'll do an update tomorrow morning, and we'll cover that for tomorrow. But just so you know, the tornado risk uh, tomorrow also fairly substantial there, already up to 10% with a hatched area, the wind threat, and then, of course, the hail. Yes, tomorrow will be a busy day as well. So one of the tools that we use, I talked about this on Fox Weather yesterday. They asked me, you know, how do you track these? Hurricanes are different. Hurricanes are this huge target headed towards the coastline. We know what the impacts are expected to be. We set up a huge network of cameras and weather sensors, and I'm not going to say it's easy, but we generally know where we need to be, you know, somewhere in that hurricane warning area. For severe weather, and all the chasers know this, you don't know where these storms are going to pop up. Where's that tornado going to be? Where is the most picturesque, whatever your goal is out there? We don't know, so we rely on guidance. And you can look over um, charts and different levels of the atmosphere and photographs and soundings and you can drive yourself crazy doing that. I like to just sit back, relax, wait till the day of and then just look at the high resolution models. These convectively allowing models or CAMs as they are called. There's the HER, the H-R-R-R and then the different versions of the NAM and just kind of see what the models say especially the closer we get to initiation of storms. So that being said, this is the 16Z high resolution rapid refresh model. In fact, speaking of refresh, let's just make sure that 16Z is the most recent because I've had this window open a little bit. It's not the most recent, but it's only two hours into the 17Z. So we'll go back to 16Z. There's your convection, uh, by the way, down here in Texas. Uh, a low pressure area sitting down here, lots of humid air and lots of precipitable water in the atmosphere. But for my purposes, I am interested mainly in this area right through here. And let's see what our good friend, the high resolution 
rapid refresh model shows. So this is about um, 1 p.m. Central Time, noon Mountain. So we'll just keep it in Central Time to make it simple. 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. There we go. By 4 p.m., we should start to see some storms forming in northwest Kansas. And then out here in the Denver metro area, just coming off the Front Range, the Palmer Plateau region. And by the way, we do have a couple of cameras permanently set up in Colorado. One is in Parker looking east. So we're going to see those storms go right in front of that camera. Matt's house. He's okay. And uh, the other one, and a good friend of ours, a good friend of the project, his name is Scott over at Pro Ranch Welding. That's his business there, among other things that Scott does. And uh, we have a camera at his place looking out towards Pikes Peak. Probably won't see much from that cam. But we do have a couple of cameras out there. We're no Earth Cam yet, but we do have a handful of these cameras scattered around the lower 48. But anyway, back to the task at hand. That's what it looks like later this afternoon, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And then things really get cranking. And we could see several supercell storms, individuals, individual storms track through eastern Colorado, western Kansas, northwest Kansas, especially into southwest Nebraska, maybe eventually making it up into south west south dakota brant beckman's neck of the woods up there in rapid city we matt and i are going to focus on northwest kansas northeast colorado some driving but not hours and hours of well there will be when it's all said and done but that's how we do it when you know this is the models once the storms uh, fire we'll already be there we'll use radar scope and we'll know we'll know where to be it's it's not that difficult especially with the technology that we have today. Now, one of the things that we're using, this is a still image from a video that I tried to produce the other day, but there was something wrong with the codec in it or whatever, so I had to do a still frame to show you what I wanted to show you here. We call that camera right there our buster cam, and we'll commonly refer to, it to, to that when we're posting on social media. You'll see it in the video that I'm going to show in just a moment for you. Why do we call it that? Well, the orange thing is called a barrier buster, and the DOT uses those to clamp signage onto jersey walls. Well, we have acquired a whole bunch of these uh, through crowdfunding, and we have retrofitted those with a big steel L bracket, courtesy of Scott. See how it all works over at Pro Ranch Welding? Uh, and another gentleman from Georgia who made one for us as well out of some heavy aluminum. And we can attach these cameras to this heavy steel clamp and either attach it to a jersey wall, especially for hurricanes, and we've done that several times over the last few years, or in the case of severe weather, it's a camera system that's fairly heavy on the bottom. We get a supercell coming, a storm, whatever, hail core, tornado maybe, and we can put this out in front of it, just lay it right down in the field and go. Now, yes, it can get knocked over if the wind is 70, 80 miles an hour, but it's really bottom heavy, and it would take a lot, a lot to knock it over. It's mainly for the big hail and to see maybe if there is a tornado that it passes by a few hundred yards away. We don't want anything close where it's like hitting the equipment. That doesn't look like anything. We've seen videos of that, and it just like, looks like you're inside of a vacuum cleaner, really. This is meant to get us close where we can't be, just like we do for hurricanes. So that's our buster cam. We have one of those for our work today and then several of the normal remote cams that we can just set out on utility poles or even clip to a barbed wire fence, including GoPro cams, plenty of those to create a quick network to capture literally a net or a fence as we like to call it when storms move through. So with all that being said, let me show you what we got yesterday real quick here. All right. And I'll make this available on YouTube uh, later today after I upload it to our supporters, our patrons first. But just a little preview for you here in this video. This is the highlights from yesterday. This is time lapse from one of those remote cams out near Little River, Kansas. I'm going to jump ahead about 30 seconds into that time lapse. The storms moved through. We captured uh, the first wave of it from this big mass of storms that came out of Nebraska and went southeast towards Wichita later. But then another cluster of storms developed, and this is what that looked like. This was coming in towards Great Bend, um, kind of a supercell. It had some rotation with it, 
but definitely a very large, severe storm, part of this overall cluster of storms that was out there. This is what it looked like from Matt's GoPro, and it's stunning when you see it in 4K. Let me just kind of zoom through here. Uh, we got some hail. This is that buster cam I was telling you about. Matt went up and set it up on this berm, looking out across the field. So let me back it up. As this storm came in, we got out of there. Matt put the uh, buster cam right there on that berm. We don't have a picture of it on there, but that's where he put it. And this is the hail that it caught. That's golf ball and uh, ping pong ball size hail out there. And yeah, that can be very problematic. <clears throat> right, Matt? If you're not careful. Yes. Um, so let's move along. Uh, this is a time lapse from that buster cam. Pretty cool to see nature in motion. Then another se uh, series of storms form. This just looks completely CGI, even though it's not. It's just incredible the colors that you get while we're out there. This is the GoPro shot uh, that Matt took. Uh, he's got a GoPro up on a gimbal, so that helps to keep it nice and stable. And just kind of moving on along here, this is what it looked like in different and various perspectives. There's that hail core right there, that greenage that you often hear storm, ch storm chasers talk about. That is it right there. They said that in the movie Twister too, right? Greenage came up a lot back in that movie. Maybe they'll say it again in Twister 2, which they're now starting pre-production on. Finally, we put a camera out for those big lines of storms that just kept going on into the night, and we caught a beautiful, beautiful light show uh, from another set of storms that came in as the evening progressed. I'll just let this roll. Oh, the nest cams, we can put them anywhere. This is just on a wooden utility pole looking out across the prairie there, and look at that light show just amazing nature in action and that rain falling ah they really need it out there for agricultural purposes to refresh the aquifers yeah to some extent mostly groundwater but yes i appreciate all the help from our supporters both on patreon and of course from you folks that watch on youtube and if you want to get involved and help support the project be a part of it we do have a patreon you go to patreon.com slash hurricane track. We post a lot of exclusive content there, of course. We have a great community, a little over 530 strong right now, and there's always room for more. So check that out if you get a chance. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up, get it online for you. Matt and I will be out and about in a couple of hours at the, long, at the latest. We will be streaming live on our public YouTube feed, and then if we have any cameras that are set up, those will show up in the sidebars. CJ and Mike and Tim and everybody on the back there, they do a great job. CJ might be actually doing uh, some live commentary today, uh, narrating what's going on. We're still working on all of that. But yes, we will have live coverage, and we should have Verizon LTE everywhere we go. Might be a couple dropouts here and there. You never know. It's not perfect, but it's darn close. And no, Verizon is not a sponsor. So there's no FTC stuff that I have to comply with. We are a Verizon bill-paying group of people completely crowdfunded here through Patreon. So there's that. All right? Have a good afternoon. Stay safe if you're out there yourselves chasing these storms. Go back to the day one here to end this. And uh, I'll see you when we're out there on the road ourselves. I am Mark Suddeth. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you later on somewhere out there on the highway.